we're going to look at the Buffalo WSS 5000 series tools. When you get your new Buffalo WSS 5000 series, you open it up and inside will be a plastic container that contains a, an SD card that you can plug into a USB drive that then you can plug into a computer uh, being a Windows system or a Mac as well as the back of your Terra station for recovery mode. So if you plug it into a Windows computer like I've done here, it's going to pull up and look like this. It has all the boot information, so that way if you plug it into the back of your WSS unit, flip the switch to USB, then if you turn the unit on, it will then recover your OS partition. Um, it is going to, it would also, it's going to reset the partitions to 100 gigabyte uh, and then the, the standard OS partition levels. So if you've done any modifying of that, then it also would mess up those partitions to where you could lose data. So you don't want to just use the recovery tool unless you have unless you really need to. So I'm going to use I'm going to right now install the Terra Navigator. Easiest way to get to your Terra stations, especially if you have more than one, is to install the Terra Navigator tool. It's going to go and it's going to search at layer two for any Terra station link station devices on your network. Now you may already have this installed from a previous version. The new version includes the WSS 5000 series. So you'll want to you'll want to install the newest version so that way it includes the new model and recognizes it as a WSS device rather than a standard NAS. Now if you use the begin installation portion, this is going to take you through a tutorial on how to plug in the Ethernet cord to the back of your WSS unit, uh, how to plug in the power cord, and some tutorial information. I'm actually going to skip directly to the NAS Navigator 2 install only, and we're going to install NAS Navigator. I actually uninstalled my previous version, so this is just installing fresh. It actually pops up down here that it's been completed and I'll hit finish. Now I'm going to pull up my NAS navigator and you'll see it's going to go out and it's going to search. So on the first load it takes the longest. It's going to look for all your devices on the network. Um, you'll notice it's version 2.56. It's an incremental update. We've already been on version 2. Uh, previous versions I think were 2.5. Okay, you'll see that the NAS navigators found all the different NAS on my LAN. I'm going to go ahead and right click see it's also rebuilding my RAID arrays. I'm going to right click on this NAS and you'll see my WS has Open Remote Desktop. Now if you don't have the newest tool installed, it might see it just as a standard NAS which is going to think that you have settings that get utilized in a web browser um, and they do not. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this, Open Remote Desktop, it's automatically going to plug in the IP info, put in your password. The standard username, default username is administrator and the default password is all lowercase password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. I'm actually going to show you how to take a look at your network card and set your NIC to a static IP and we're also going to take a look at how to change the name of your device. So here it's preparing it. Okay, so now that it's in, uh, again, it's still loading Server Manager. Um, I know that Server Manager is going to pop up in the center of the screen here. So I'm going to mess with the network card first. The bottom right, the easiest way to do it is, uh, I like to get rid of the sound icon and ones that aren't used, but it, there's the icon down here for your network cards. I have just one of them plugged in at this time. When you first plug in it, it's going to be on DHCP. So you'll want the NAS navigator or you'll want to look at it manually by plugging a VGA monitor in and a USB keyboard and mouse and you could do this locally. Um, however, I'm remoting into it because it is activated on first setup so as soon as this device boots you'll be able to remote in as I have and we're going to go to change adapter settings. Now I have the two adapters. I'm going to right click on my first adapter that is plugged in and go to properties. You're probably used to this screen already and I don't have TCP IP 6 going on right now where I am, so I've actually disabled this. And you can double click on TCP IP 4 and you can set a static IP. I've done that already at this time. This was set by me. I've gone in here and set my own IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that because I've already done it and I have a static IP. Um, I've also taken the liberty of installing a couple of roles that we can look at. So you can also notice at the very bottom left of Server 2012, 
if you put your mouse down there, that's when it brings up your Start menu. Now you can left click to pull up Start and any features you have, features and programs you have installed. Hit Escape to get out of that. Or you can put your mouse down there and right click and it will give you some tools that you can use for managing your system. You can go into disk management perhaps and look at any look at your hard drive configuration, look at your partitions, check your uh, check your RAID 5. Um, you can also right click down there and go to your control panel, uh, your, your programs and features system. And so what I'm going to do is take a look at our disk management. So you can see we have a mirror going right here with my C. So I've mirrored my disk 0 and disk 1 on my C drive. This is a RAID 5 that's been configured. And what we've also done is left 50 megabytes of unallocated space. Now I made a mirror of my extra 100 gigabytes. Um, it does not come like that by default. By default these are actually going to be deleted unallocated space. So it'll look just like this. The 50 megabytes of unallocated space is going to help alleviate any concerns on if because not all hard drive configurations that are one terabyte are the exact same. So if you don't get the exact same model, you'll have a little leeway in the software RAID to be able to still build a RAID 5 even though they're not identical drives. So I can go ahead and close the disk management area. You can also click on start and if I right click on computer, it's going to pull up the menu bar at the bottom where it used to be a drop down and that's where I have manage properties so forth. So I'm actually going to click properties and in here it's going to show your NAS, it's going to show your specs, it's going to show it's running the Atom CPU, 4 gigabytes of RAM, I'm running a Terra Station 5400 and it has your domain information and name information. So I'm going to click on change settings. Now this will require a reboot. If you want to change your name and or add it to a domain that requires system rebooting. So I'm going to hit change I could change this name maybe to TS5400 new or, or whatever you want to make the name of it as. If you want to get rid of the 5400 and call it Buffalo WSS, something like that. You could. Uh, if I were to hit OK, it's going to tell me, hey, I need to reboot to change that name. Uh, you can also change, add it to a domain. So member of, I could add it to the buffalo.com domain and go through the domain configuration. This is going to be very same configuration that you've run through in server 2008 or 2003 respectively. Uh, I'm going to cancel these as I don't want to reboot the system right now. Okay, now that our server manager has loaded, it has the area to configure this server, add your roles and features, uh, and so forth. Now server manager, while that's loaded on this Windows server to manage it, you can actually install download and install server manager on a standard Windows computer. You can have a Windows 7, Windows 8 machine that has Windows Server Manager installed that can then do that from your workstation rather than remote in and do it through this feature on the server. So you can also go to your tools here. This is going to have all your tools on being able to manage your computer. Uh, there's your computer management area. Uh, if you do your manage, this is where you're going to add roles and features. So I'm actually going to click on Add Roles and Features. And here is where you're going to go through the process of seeing what is already installed, what is partially installed, and what you would, uh, what is uninstalled. So I'm going to click on Next. And I'm using a role-based feature system. And it's, I'm going to be installing it to the server on which I'm using. And here's where I've already installed a lot of the server roles. So you'll see I haven't installed completely all of IIS, but IIS is going to be there. Maybe you want to run a, a local intranet and all the data is going to still reside on your WSS. Well, you might have a small web package that you just put in IIS and then you could host it and all the downloads could be via, do it through that way for a LAN. Uh, you wouldn't want to host a, a full website that's going to be for the public most likely um, but you could host it via IIS if you did want to. So you can load that up. Um, IIS is also going to get your FTP. So I installed IIS on here just to show it could be as well as FTP is installed through IIS if you want to be able to use FTP. You'll notice I'm clicking the small arrows. Uh, the arrows are going to 
show you more information as to what is or isn't installed. And again, it's light gray because I haven't installed all the features in a subcategory. So if I were to install the portion of application development here for, I think that's a .NET and ASP, then it would be a dark black, which would show, hey, you've installed everything for this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back up. Uh, I've already installed those. I've installed print server ability, so you can make it a print server. And I've installed uh, in the file and storage area, file and iSCSI services. Some of those already come pre-installed. You will have file server available. You'll have iSCSI target server pre-installed, and you'll have the iSCSI initiator pre-installed. So those will come with it. What I've installed additionally is NFS server, so that way this can be an NFS target with your hard drive space. Um, and I've installed DFS namespace and DFS replication, so that way you can handle uh, replication of using DFS. I'm going to minimize that, and I'm going to show you the features that you can install. So you can either click on features or hit next down there. I just clicked on features. Uh, .NET Framework comes pre-installed. I installed BitLocker so that way we can do a little uh, drive encryption or some kind of encryption, file level encryption. Um, I installed the client for NSS. That does not come pre-installed. The client allows this w, uh, WSS server to attach to an NFS target. So if maybe you have another Terra station or NFS target somewhere, you can connect that to this WSS server. You can use this comes uh, the enhanced storage comes pre-installed and the multipath input output, which is MPIO. I installed MPIO so that way I could. We have two NICs in here. You can utilize both NICs using MPIO. Maybe you set up a maybe you have an iSCSI target somewhere. You can set this up to attach to the iSCSI target and use MPIO to use both network cards simultaneous. So that's what I've installed. Uh, you can install more. So after you have all those checked that you want, we're just going to hit, you can hit next and it'll go through and install those services. They're likely going to take a while uh, because it's going to need time to install the services. They're going to need a reboot. So be prepared to reboot your machine if you're installing a lot of services and roles. That's the end of this tutorial. I'll try to do more in-depth tutorials on each of the roles and features and how to utilize some of that with your NAS in the future.